Drawing tablet. Hello everybody, welcome to Builder Buy. Today we're going to take a look at five ways we visually communicate a message. One of those being a drawing tablet. The drawing tablet we're going to be talking about is the Wacom Intuos Pro Paper Edition Large. Now, of those five ways, number one would be something like uh, template animation software, either using Doodly or Toonly, and we could use the uh, tablet in conjunction with that. So that's two ways. Number three would be a dry marker board. I have one up here. I sometimes use that, and I will be using it for some collaborations. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, another example might be if I use specifically the Lenovo Flex because it is a laptop that we use to control the video switch but I can take that and fold it over I can also use it as a tablet with a pen what I don't like about that is the slick surface I prefer something with a tactile feel I'll get into that more in a little bit later another option would be if we use an electronic dry marker board and I thought about either that up here or possibly having a screen up here which would be static because we're going to be doing some uh, collaborations which means some interviews which is going to also lead to some of the uh, classes that we used to do. We'll do some of our tutorials probably in Zoom that we will then edit and then put up for you guys to see and to share. So as we're doing those, we need some way to collaborate. Based on the subscriber base we have right now, and I want to thank you guys for joining us. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Welcome. We're at a level right now with our subscriber base where this makes sense. When we have about four times this many subscribers, something like this makes sense. But because of the size, and the scope of it, we're talking about a Vibe touchscreen board. So something like that we can use in collaboration. We'll get into more of that a little bit later. But those are kind of pricey. And, and again, until to reiterate, we have four times the subscribers we do now. That doesn't make sense. This does. Uh, and this can be used in any number of ways. So as we look at those five ways to visually communicate the messages, this is the one I want to talk about. And we want to cover ten specific questions about this one item. Number one, will this work with a PC? Absolutely. Will it work with a Mac? Yes. And I'll put up a link to it so you'll have it in the description. This will also work with a smartphone. Now, we happen to have an Android. So to use this with the Android, there's software we need to download, which brings us to number two. Our connectivity options. We can either plug into a USB-C port to connect the tablet, or we can use Bluetooth. Now, what about lag? Okay. If you've got lag, you're probably hooked up on Bluetooth. My suggestion would be to connect this with a USB-C connection. Now, this particular item comes with a cable that's USB-C because it has to be powered, battery has to be charged, plugs into a USB-3 port. If you want to go to USB-C to USB-C, you'll need to supply your own cable. Also, if you want to go USB-C to USB-C on like a smartphone, you'll have to get your own cable. Which brings us to the next point are the consumables that come with this. I say consumables, not just paper, but the uh, inventory of parts. There's three items I would be concerned about. Number one would be the, uh, the surface texture. You might want to get extra of that. Number two would be the pins, which brings us to the next point. Number three, which is actually four and five. You've got two different kinds of pins. Now these pins, this particular pin uses a nib. It's got a small nib on that end and a large nib on that end. And this is an actual pen that uses a cartridge. So my suggestion would be to get extra ink cartridges. So I'd get extra pens and extra cartridges. Now you might say, why? Well, there's built-in obsolescence. At some point, these will no longer function. And uh, you want to get parts while you can. For example, we had originally started with an art pad. Not art pad 2, but art pad 1. So this worked in Windows 98, worked in Windows 2000. To work in Windows 7 would have required a hack, which would have given us just left, right, which was mouse support, uh, not actual drawing. So this is a great device, worked with a serial support. It still works, and we have the device we got from uh, PI Engineering for the digit adapter that allowed us to put two serial devices on one serial port. And we're not going to do that anymore because even if we hook this up, through a PCI card or if we got a USB to serial port cable to hook this up no driver support so it's kind of pointless so I like this but it was too small and because of that as you can see the size about the size of my hand was about the size of the tablet it just was not big enough for me to do what I wanted so even though I have two of these because I had two computers um, I can't use them I'm not going to use them no driver support so now we're at a point with content creation where we've upgraded. And because of the five ways we're looking at, and this being one, we're at a point because of content creation, I need to take that next step. In other words, if I do custom artwork, I need a tablet. Now, if I were doing a logo, 
the last logo I worked on, we went from a mimeograph machine to the computer. So it was my job to bring that logo in. Okay, at that time, we didn't have tablets. And if we had it, I wouldn't have used one because it was uh, clean line art. We had three applications to work from. Only one of those three applications is still viable. The one we used was Arts and Letters, which is uh, not doing too well right now. The other was Corel Draw, and uh, that would be the one to use now. And the third one was Micrographics. They're gone. They've been gone the longest. And uh, all three great, but the easiest to use was Arts and Letters. In fact, Arts and Letters had a logo design maker that designed two very famous logos. One, the logo you see that uh, uh, the phone company uses, the circle with the funny looking lines on it, that was done in Arts and Letters. And two, the logo that's used to advertise the Texas Lottery, that was also done in Arts and Letters. Been a long time. So as things have changed, as we go forward, you want to make sure you've got your consumables covered and you've got driver support. Now, we've talked about audio interfaces. We're going to be doing some more of that. And uh, we're going to be doing some stuff with uh, capturing. But as it relates to content creation and of the five ways, if I were using something like Toonly or Doodly, I could do that with a mouse. But if I want to create a custom caricature, I need something like this. If I'm going to be using a, a dry marker board, I can stand there with a pen, but then I have no way to translate that other than you see it on the screen. But still to get it in the computer, not just as a bitmap, but as a, uh, a vector graphic, something that I can edit, like an EPS file, I need to get it in electronically. I need a tablet to do that with. And uh, this particular Wacom tablet, because it has paper, it has that touch sensitivity. Now, a question comes up, consumer or professional, is it worth it? That depends on your workflow. It depends on what you're going to be doing. I've given you two scenarios. Uh, one where I created a logo where I used a mouse. Two where I needed to do some uh, animation uh, and I need the tablet. And the reason I'm doing this right now, I've been sitting on this a while, but I came across a young man, a filmmaker. His name is uh, his name's Quentin. And uh, he had a 40-second video that I looked at as a filmmaker. And he said, you know, what do you think of it? So me and others, we, we gave our input what we thought of it. And he had a great logo. But I told him, I said, after I described with a parallax shot how it comes around, his logo was not real apparent, and I didn't understand what he was communicating with his call to action until I looked at it four or five times. Looking at it on a smartphone versus looking at it on a computer, I was able to say, okay, that logo to me ought to come from the left and go to the right and then come back up. And as I explained the parallax shot and how that should work, he said, I don't understand. So I'm thinking, okay, I can show you two cans of string and say this is a phone, but if you don't get that, I need to show you. So I'm going to use the tablet to digitize his logo, which is pretty cool looking. And I may show you in a video later. I don't know. And then I'm going to show him what I'm talking about. Then he can see if it's something he wants to use. Great filmmaker. Got lots of potential. He's in the service. Appreciate his work he's doing. Uh, somewhere in Europe, I'm not sure. I kind of think he's in Germany, but I don't know that for a fact. I do know it was snowing when I was talking to him because I said some of that scenery, you need to get on video. So as we, as we look at what this can be done with for collaboration, the next question is, okay, if I have a tablet, can I use this instead of a mouse? Well, you can, but I would use it in conjunction with a mouse. Why do I say that? There's some things I don't like to use a mouse with. I'm a keyboard guy. I like keyboard shortcuts. There's a lot of things I can do with a keyboard that I can do a whole lot faster. But there's some stuff I need the ability to draw with. Now, I can do drawing on this with two ways. One, I can use the nibs and I can draw on this and I can look at the software or I can use the pen and I can look at this and draw on this at the same time. I like that capability. I like my options. Until we get to the point where we're doing this, we're still doing this and projecting this. In fact, if you guys remember when we did the video talking about heat, that was done strictly on the screen because with the video switch, I can put up four screens, had me in one screen, computers, and then we had another screen right next to me looking at the uh, FLIR camera. Okay, when we're communicating the message, I want to be able to make that communication clear so you guys get the point with as much information as we have access to as concisely and as clearly as possible. Now, another question comes up, can I use this without a computer? Yes, you can. Once it's charged, and I believe I'm at 99%, uh, you can unplug it, use it by itself. You can save up to 20 drawings. You can save layers. Then you can later plug it into your whatever device, and you're in business. Now, will this work with a Chromebook? No, it will not, because that's uh, web-based using a browser. 
until they come up with some kind of a Java application to do that. That's the only way I can think of off the top of my head that would work. But until they do that, Mac, PC, desktop, laptop, or smartphone. So the purpose of this was talking about five ways to visually communicate a message and using this specific Wacom tablet to answer 10 specific questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to thank you for watching. So coming up in the next video, we're going to be talking about capturing and streaming. That could end up being three videos, uh, depending on how the questions go, because I've, I've had some feedback on that and some things that I want to explain to you guys. You know, once you've done it, it's like anything. It's easy, but it, it's that first time. So that one video could end up being three. So we'll see how the process goes. So capturing and streaming coming up. We we'll look forward to seeing the next video. And we've still got some stuff to do with NVMe that we're not finished covering yet. Question has come up about doing some NVMe boot raid. We'll get to it. Next video, we're out.